everybody. Welcome back if you've been with us before. My name is Maddie. And my name is Katie. And we have been the co-hosts of the grades three to six summer camp online sessions at SAIT. And this is unfortunately our very last one, which we are really sad about. So if you've been with us before, this is um, your last fun presentation and experiment. And if you're new here, then we're really excited excited that you were able to snag a spot before we stop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh we got oh, some comments from people. It was really nice to see some familiar names and some new names as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we appreciate you joining us. Um, but yeah, today, we, we'll, as, as normal, if you haven't, if you haven't joined us, uh, just to let you know, we are recording this session. Um, and we can't see you or hear you. Um, but if you do want to say any comments or ask any questions, they're in the Q&A part at the bottom and a comment section, a uh, chat area. So you can just make comments and things on there. So that's where we're getting people talking to us on the on the chat here. And um, yeah, so basically um, for our session, we'll be using Menti, but we also want to just find out how many people have been here before. Uh, we're going to put a little poll up and find out um, just who has been here before in our session so we can get started right away if um if everyone has been here and we don't have to um have to explain menti yeah so if you've never used it before then we'll definitely go over it a little bit more thoroughly so that's no problem at all um looks like a lot of you have used it so that's fine so for anyone who hasn't um we're just going to explain it a little bit more again so if you already know the um uh, the process then just be patient please so okay that gives us pretty much enough information there okay so today we're going to be learning a little bit about germs some stuff you might already know some stuff you might not know and then we're going to be making jelly soaps which are super fun to make and um, they take a little while to set in the fridge but we have some that we've already made so we can show you just like we're in the Food Network. You can't eat them, but we have them already made to show you. <laughs> so Katie will be um, on another computer answering all your questions and comments. So that being said, if um, you need me, who will be presenting today, to slow down at any time, to repeat something, um, any clarification at all, then Katie will either let me know or she will uh, answer you herself, like I mentioned. So, yeah. all right, I'll be back here and let me know if you want to chat. <laughs> so somebody was just asking what the Menti code is. So I'm going to share my screen and show you all again. Okay, so at the very top of the screen here, you should see the Menti code. Um, it is, if you type in www.menti.com and use that code, then you can either do this on a separate browser and just go back and forth between Zoom and uh, Menti. This'll, this is a, app, a website that allows you to interact with us a little bit more. So you can answer some questions. Um, it's kind of like a PowerPoint, but you'll be prompted to answer some things. So it is optional if you don't feel like answering any of the questions, but we love it when you interact with us. So um, on the bottom right here, or it might show up on the bottom, depending on which device you're on, you can see some hearts that are coming up. So that's a little react icon and people are clicking that. So now we know for sure that there are 17 people who have accessed Menti and have clicked that heart. So um, this here, here is just an example. And if you didn't catch the code, it's going to be at the top of the screen the whole time. Um, this was from a different um, session that we did but we've shrunk the screens down and we took a screenshot. So on the left here, we have Zoom and on the right is Menti. So if you want to do that at the same time um, and see them both side by side, you can do that. Some people use a smartphone and put Menti on there. So unless um, there are any questions about Menti or if you're confused at all, um, Katie, have you no, any questions? Yeah. Okay, so if you need any clarification again, please feel free to put that in the Zoom chat. We're happy to help and slow down anytime. So I think we're going to get started. Okay, so Germs 101 and Jelly Soap Making. 
Okay, so first little note is the purpose of this presentation and this activity is to be informative and also to be fun. So we do not want to scare you. Um, we know that it can be a little bit nerve wracking to talk about being sick and there's a lot going on in the world right now with COVID. Um, we don't want to cause any more anxiety or fear at all, but it's really helpful to stay informed so that you can help protect yourself and just look after yourself a little bit better and other people. And some of this stuff is really, really interesting too. Okay, so this is our first little question that we have for all of you. So if you see on your mentee screen a little um, box to submit answers, the question that we'd like to ask you is, what are germs? Do you know what they are? Do you have an idea of what they are? Give everyone a minute to put in some answers. Okay. So some answers that we have here are something that makes you sick, bacteria, viruses, mm -hmm. tiny things. Yes, yeah, so they are microscopic. I don't know. That's totally okay if you don't know. Germs are like viruses like Clovis that make us sick and take over our immune system. Small microscopic parasites, things that live in your body. Virus that can make you sick. You cannot see them and they make you sick. Tiny COVID-19, yeah, that is a virus that is um, from a germ. Bacteria, viruses. So a lot of you have really, really great answers here. These are pretty much um, the, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more of a complex definition, but all of you pretty much have the right idea. So thank you so much for your great answers. Okay, so now that you've seen some of the answers that other people put, um, this is a little multiple choice. So can you pick the best answer here? What are germs? It's either uh, we have for the options microscopic insects, microscopic organisms or living things that can make us sick, tiny specks of dirt and dust. That's the third option. By the way, I noticed that somebody raised their hand in the Zoom chat. So unfortunately, we can't um, help you out that way because we can't allow you to turn on your microphone with this setting. So if you have a question, please put it in the chat box and we'll try to get to it that way. Okay, so if anyone else wants to submit an answer, I'm going to count down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Okay, so per, almost all of you got the correct answer. So the other one that uh, a couple of people answered microscopic um, insects, they're not insects, but they are microscopic. So microscopic organisms and an organism is um, just a living thing, a very, very small one that can make us sick. So we can't see them with just our eyes. We can't see these little particles, but they do exist and they can be seen under a microscope. So great job again, everybody. There are a few types of germs. So some of you already put a couple of the main types, but there are four main types. So the first one is bacteria. And an example of a um, illness that's caused by bacteria, a particular bacteria is strep throat. Uh, second one is viruses. So we're all very familiar with COVID-19, a little too familiar, <laughs> but that is caused by a virus. The third one is fungi. So you might be thinking like mushrooms. Um, and mushrooms are a type of fungi, but they're not a germ. So um, this is just, fungi covers a lot of ground. But if you've ever heard of the um, condition called athlete's foot, you could Google it if you want, might not be the most pleasant thing to Google, but that is a condition caused by a type of fungi, which is sort of like a plant, but again, microscopic little organism. And finally, this one I had never even heard of before, protozoa. So um, an, again, another little type of organism that can cause illness, and an example is malaria. So that is caused by something called a protozoa. So I think we're most familiar 
with bacteria and viruses. Um, the other ones might not be as big of an issue where we live, um, but yeah. Okay, my computer is a little laggy, sorry. <laughs> okay, so some fun bacteria facts. And I say fun because bacteria are very, very interesting. Um, more bacteria exist on Earth than any other life form. So they are extremely abundant on our planet. And this is an image of a certain type of bacteria. Bacteria are also the oldest organisms that exist on the planet. So the very first life form was a type of bacteria. That's pretty cool. And it is helpful to know that most bacteria are harmless. So some are even really helpful to have, like there's bacteria on and in our bodies constantly, and we do not need to be getting rid of all of them. Some bacteria is definitely harmful, but um, most of it we need in order to help with bodily functions like digestion, for example. So that is you know, comforting to know that most of them are not out to be harmful, but some of them certainly are. All right, second question we have for you. What are some ways to prevent germs from getting into our bodies? Mm -hmm. Okay, so some answers we've gotten so far. Washing our hands, wash your hands. So that's a big one for sure. Wear a mask. Yeah. Yeah, so right now, because of, um, I'm sure all of you know this, but because of this particular virus pandemic that's going around, it is, um, it exists in like bodily fluids. So if we're coughing or talking and the particles come out of our mouth, that can land um, into another person's airway. So that's why the masks are helpful right now. Don't touch our eyes. Yep. So that's kind of related to washing your hands as well wash our hands, not, not touch our face, and social distance. Showering, yes. <laughs> Showering is very important hygiene. Don't pick your nose because boogers are dirty. Yep. <laughs> Put sanitizer, so hand sanitizer. Sneeze, cough inside your arm for sure. So I'm sure all of you also know this, but it's really good to, if you're going to cough or sneeze, put up your elbow like this in front of your face instead of in your hands or just out into the air because that's not very polite and it can cause more germs to spread. When you touch dirty surfaces, you should wash your hands thoroughly and avoid touching your face. Also cover your cough and wash your hands after blowing your nose and before and after eating. So that one comment kind of covers everything. So that was a very thorough comment. Okay, so all of you pretty much know um, ways to prevent germs from getting into our bodies. And someone wrote, you can't really. So that's the thing. We can do our best, um, but sometimes there we're going to get sick from certain things. And um, that's just a fact of life, unfortunately. So best not to, you know, try to be too obsess obsessive or, you know, um, upset about it. But there are definitely daily routines that are extremely helpful. So thank you again, everybody. You are all really on the ball with this. Okay, so pretty much the main um, most helpful thing that you can do regularly, multiple times a day to prevent germs from spreading is to wash your hands. And we're going to talk about some of the science behind why this actually works. So everybody knows to do it, but do you know exactly why? There might be some interesting things that you've never heard of. I certainly wasn't aware of some of these things. So let's go through them. The science of hand washing. So most of us use our hands for a majority of tasks. We are always touching things. Our hands are very useful that way. Um, so in terms of hand washing, using soap along with water to get a good lather is more effective than just using water for sure. So there are ingredients in soap, special ones called surfactants, and these help lift particles from our skin. So when we rub our hands together, create that kind of bubbly lather, it makes the particles kind of slippery and slide off our skin a little bit easier. 
And I'm sure again, you all know this, but it's really, really important. It's important to scrub all parts of your hands. So your wrists, the back of your hand, between your fingers and underneath your nails. So some people have little nail brushes, but um, otherwise you can just kind of scrub like this, your nails on the palm of your hand. Because otherwise lots of grimies can get under there. And um, if you're in a pinch and don't have soap and water, hand sanitizer with at least 60% um, alcohol is useful. So um, the only thing is, is that a lot of the time, um, most of us will just kind of spritz a little bit of hand sanitizer on and it'll immediately dry off. But with hand sanitizer, you actually have to put quite a lot of it on your hands and really um, get your hands quite wet with it and allow it to sit on there for um, quite a few seconds. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you are using hand sanitizer, you can be nice and generous with it. So a little bit more in depth, what happens at the microscopic level? So obviously we can, if we have dirt on our hands, we can maybe see it washing off into the sink. But sometimes there are germs that are not visible at all, right? They might, might not show like dirt on your hands, but they could still be there. So COVID-19, for example, is a virus. So each virus particle is made of three main layers. And you don't need to remember all of this because some of this is a little bit complicated. You might have heard this term before, maybe not. But the three main layers in this virus are RNA, which is ribonucleic acid. I think I said that correctly. Go me. <laughs> Proteins and lipids, which is a scientific word for fats. So what soap does that is extremely helpful with this virus and other viruses is that if there are, let's say, COVID-19 particles on your hands and you wash your hands with soap, the soap will dissolve the weakest layer of this particle. So that is the lipid or the fatty layer. So all of these layers are kind of bonded together um, chemically and the soap will kind of loosen everything up and break down the fatty parts. So um, what that does is the it makes the virus particles inactive and they will slide right off your hand. So that's why hand washing is talked about all the time right now. It's not just, you know, something that people randomly say. It really does work if you come in contact with the virus or any other germs. So I thought that was really, really neat to learn, you know, what, are, what a virus is composed of and how the soap actually works. And here is a very cool um, little GIF or GIF. Is it GIF or GIF? I think there's a, there's a, a lot of uh, debate. On yeah, there's some <laughs> debate on the GIF versus, versus GIF controversy. <laughs> Maybe you can tell me which one it should be in the comments. But that's a pretty cool little diagram there. Yeah, so Maddie, I, mm. to clarify, I know this if, um, if you're not sure, but um, so does soap um, actually kill the virus? So from what I know that Katie asked me if the soap kills the virus, um, the virus isn't necessarily alive in the sense that we think of, but I think the, the word deactivate kind of covers it. So it makes it not, um, not harmful anymore. Did I miss anything? Yeah. So one thing I learned um, was that the soap um, that like the soap is kind of breaking it down mm. and then so when you're having bacteria the, or, sorry not bacteria the um, hand sanitizer is the one that actually kills it oh um, so okay. versus versus like soap um, which breaks it down so soap breaking it down on your skin so it's good to kind of dry it off or wipe it off of your hands and that's why that's important because otherwise that bacteria is still broken up on your skin and you oh. have to kind of like get it off somehow right so that makes having sense. wet hands after you wash your hands um not always like the best like you just have to make sure it's off of it and um, but killing like actually killing hand sanitizer kills like quite a bit of it mm -hmm. but you have to again like you said saturate your hands quite a lot that yeah. is so interesting thank you so much katie so like katie said and um i think this is on the next slide here oh <laughs> well first of all this is a very real, very scientific, scientific image that I did not just create in Microsoft Word. Um, <laughs> real image of soap kicking some germy butt. 
Mm-hmm. So Soap is kind of a superhero. <laughs> Um, but so like Katie was saying in the very last um, step of these of the hand washing tips dry your hands using a clean towel or air dry them so that's why drying your hands is important because the soap will allow the particles to be lifted from your hands but then they have to go somewhere so the water might wash you know a lot of them off into the sink but some could still be sitting on your hands so grabbing a paper towel or a clean um, a clean dish towel a clean hand cloth is a really good idea after that but the hand sanitizer doesn't have to be dried off because um, it evaporates on its own so you can you probably all know this but just to go over it again you have to wet your hands with clean running water and it actually doesn't have to be hot or warm water it can be cold water um, it does this has the same effect turn off the tap, apply soap, lather your hands, and so, like I said, all the different parts of your hands, under your nails, and scrubbing for at least 20 seconds will really make sure that you've gotten every part of your hand thoroughly. Um, So a little tip is you can hum happy birthday from beginning to end and twice, and rinse your hands and dry them. So, sure you all probably knew that, but very good to keep it in uh, fresh in our minds because I think sometimes we can get a little bit um, uh, lenient with some of these tasks that really help us. So um, you might kind of start to shorten the time that you spend washing your hands. I know I do that sometimes. So now I'm trying to remember, okay, spend 20 seconds. Do we have any questions so far, Katie? Um, Not just one comment Mm -hmm. um, about uh, Kashvi said that that we should not waste water. But I Mm -hmm. guess if we are staying safe, um, and obviously for that 20 seconds, um, it's not too long to have water running. Um, but there is, yeah, there is things, ways to be conscious of like making sure that you're preserving the water. So not keeping it on for longer than that. Yeah. So you actually, um, don't have to keep the water running for the full 20 seconds, because as long as you lather up enough, then you can just turn the tap off, um, scrub your hands and turn it back on to rinse it. But that's a really, really good point. So We definitely want to be conscious of our waste as well, for sure. Okay, so it is now time to make some fun jelly soaps. So you should have received a supply list um, last week. And the first step will be boiling water in a kettle. So um, hopefully you have a kettle that's um, easy to boil water in. But if you don't have a kettle, you can do this on the stovetop. It just might take a little bit longer to boil. But um, I am going to leave this up here and uh, change my location. So I'll be right back. To make sure that Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So Elodie said, "How much water do we need?" We'll we'll explain how much water we'll be having. I think that everything's muted. Oh yeah. yeah. So hopefully everybody can hear us. Um. Oh, we do have a poll to ask about um, the specific ingredients that you're using. So um, we put on the supply list that um, the recipe calls for gelatin, but a gelatin is not something that you want to use um, because of, you know, it contains animal products, then agar agar powder can be used as well. So could you please let us know if you, which one you are using? Because that'll help us 
um, figure out which uh, parts to explain a little bit differently if necessary. All right, and I have a couple of people that are just mentioning that um, they don't have a kettle, so they're just boiling water, and that works too. Sure. Um, just be really careful when you're when you're pouring um, if it is like that, because you might need something to have a spout. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'm actually going to grab an oven mitt just in case things get really hot here. And it looks like we have two people that are using your gar gar, so we'll use okay. that as well for our session. Great to know. Agar, 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 agar. Yeah. Agar, it's kind of a <laughs> funny word, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's made from, oh, is it algae? Um, I, use, I use this quite a bit, so. Um, okay, that's really good to know. So I know some people said that their water is already boiled, so um, that was very fast. Um, that's good, but we might just need to um, get it rolling again a little bit later, because first I just want to go over all the supplies together. So. I'll show you what we have here. So the first thing is either gelatin, so this is a little packet of gelatin, or agar agar. And I'm going to show you both because um, they're very similar, but the process is slightly different and they will look a little bit different. So hopefully it's not too confusing if you're just making one of them. And then the other thing we have is soap. So have a couple, I have a couple different kinds. You do not have to have two, but um, just to show you that you can use different ones, here's a body wash, and this is just a regular, excuse me, regular hand soap. And then those are the main ingredients, oh, as well as some salt. So for whatever reason, this was in a lot of the recipes we found and tested, and it really helps them set. And um, I also read that it kind of helps to act as a, a preservative, so that's pretty cool. Now the, uh, the boiling water, again, is another ingredient. And finally, these are optional, completely optional, but if you want to make your soap some different colors, you can use some food coloring. Um, I have a little essential oil here that I might add a couple of drops, but if your soap has a scent to it, then that's totally fine. And um, if you, we also put on the supply list that you could add like some dried flowers in it, something like that, if you wanted to. Um, we put glitter in the supply list, but specifically biodegradable glitter because regular glitter um, is really bad for the water system. So, um, Katie, could you please put up the other poll that just asks um, whether you need more time to gather all your supplies? And we have like some measuring tools. I'm going to be mixing my um, jelly soaps in these measuring cups. Got some spoons here. And if you can't see the poll, um, sometimes if you're on a different in a browser, um, you might just need to put it in the chat that you need more time. Mm -hmm. um, just let me know. But then there's a poll on there just asking how that you're ready to start. Um, and then there's a couple of people asking, um, yeah, about the different types of soap. The shower shower gel seems to be good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Absolutely. As long as it's liquid, um, we've tried with a few different kinds, and as long as it's a liquid soap, it seems to work just fine. Yeah, I've used it for hand soap and shower gel. So yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so as long as it's not a bar soap, because that um, won't mix in very well. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully um, most people are ready. It looks like it. Okay. Um, yeah. So the first thing that I'm going to do, because mine is not ready to go yet, is I have my kettle off to the side here, and we only need to have three quarters of a cup of boiling or very, very hot water. So I um, uh, don't need to fill up my kettle too much here, but I'm going to turn mine on and let it boil. So if you have not let your water boil yet, then now's your time to do that. Um, and then we have Anna asked if um, they can use cups instead of molds. Um, I haven't used them myself because it's it may stick. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, my kettle is a little bit loud here, yeah. but we're doing this in real time. So hopefully you can hear me, but um, I'll show you what we're using. So we're using these little silicone muffin liners, and the reason that we're using them is so that Eventually, you can like pry the soap out of them a little easier. 
but you can just use a regular container. You might just need to scoop it out with like a spoon or something like that. So it's pretty easy. Um, you can use whatever you have on hand. And yeah, so basically all we've done so far is we are heating up the water and that's why you can hear the kettle going. <laughs> Um, a couple people that have been asking, um, yeah, so transparent soap is okay, um, and, um, oh, how much gelatin is in the pack? So some of the gelatin packs might be different. So. Yeah, so good question. It's about one tablespoon. So as we put all the measurements in, Katie will write them in the chat as well. Okay, so while your water is boiling, you can open your gelatin packet and place it in here. So it's about one tablespoon of gelatin. And at the same time, you'll also put one teaspoon of salt. Okay, so I'm going to, because this requires like some mixing quickly, if you're using agar agar, then it's a little bit different. So I will um, explain that in just a second. I just don't want to shout over the kettle too much. Yeah, so one teaspoon of salt, right? I'm just yeah. going to write it in the uh, chat here. Um, I had a couple people ask um, about the glitter. Um, so how do you know it's biodegradable? Um, I think biodegradable glitter is a little harder to find. So yeah. if it was at the dollar store or something like that, usually it's not biodegradable. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it at like makeup stores and places like that because, right? yeah, but it just kind of depends. It would probably stay on it. Yeah, usually it would stay on the label for sure. So, okay, so now that you have hot water, I will go over the agar agar right after this, I promise. I just um, don't want to mix things up too much. So all I have in here is one tablespoon of gelatin and one teaspoon of salt, or it's one packet of gelatin. And now be very careful with this, please. But in this cup, I'm going to measure out three quarters of a cup of the hot water. So if you um, are comfortable you're more comfortable using like an oven mitt with this, you can definitely do that, but mine has a handle, so I won't be too hot. So that is one teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of gelatin or a packet, right? Yep, that's correct. And then we're simply going to pour the hot water in, and grab a little spoon and mix it up. So this doesn't really, oh, it really doesn't smell very good yet. Um, but I promise it'll smell better once we add the soap. So if you are just using the gelatin, then you can just go ahead and keep stirring this. And I'm going to show you what to do if you're using agar agar instead. So this is a totally different one just for people who are using agar agar. So for this one, it um, requires a little bit more. So we're actually going to use um, two tablespoons. So there's one. and two plus one teaspoon of salt as well. Come on, get in there. So two tablespoons of agar agar, one teaspoon of salt, and it is the same amount of boiling water. So uh, I'm gonna measure it here. And this is still pretty hot, so it'll be fine. So that's half a cup and that's about a quarter cup. I just put half in this one. Oops, I wrote a half. You're right, everybody. You were listening. I was tricking you. Just kidding. <laughs> it was a, so it's a third, one, uh, three quarters of a cup Oops. of water. And I instantly put a half. So if you only put half a cup in, just add another quarter cup. That's totally fine. So for this one, oops, it's kind of sticking a little bit. This one also doesn't smell very good <laughs> at first, but just mix this one around. And if you're using the gelatin, um, thank you for being patient. <laughs> just mixing this around. Okay, 
So now with the agar agar, um, it's a lot thicker in texture right away than the gelatin is. So it's just slightly different um, in its con you know, in its chemical structure. So the final thing we're going to do with the agar agar that you do not have to do with the gelatin is I'm going to put this in the microwave for um, 30 seconds. And it'll be quite thick when it comes out. So I'll just be right back to do that. If you have the gelatin, you can just keep stirring over there. Look at me and my octopus hands, but I'm gonna pop the agar agar in the microwave. And I can stir it. Um, so just wait on adding anything else. Um, but there is some people asking, uh, can you repeat the agar agar recipe? Yep, yeah, sure. So with the agar agar, um, I just took two tablespoons of that and plopped it in the microwave safe cup or bowl, one teaspoon of salt, and three quarters of a cup of water. So it's the same, just there is double the amount of agar than gelatin. I'm about to get it out of the microwave. Okay, now I actually think I need a bigger bowl for this one. So grab that. Okay, so if you're using agar agar and it's out of the microwave, it's really, really thick, as you can see. The gelatin is still really liquidy. And this one, it's just because it needs to set. So just be careful, please um, be careful when you're mixing these things because the water is still very hot, mm -hmm. so it can burn. And then how long in the microwave? We put it for 30 seconds, Yeah, right? so just 30 seconds should do the trick and it'll be very, very thick. Okay, so if you're on the gelatin again, now it's time to add our soap. So I'm using um, this soap here, but you can use, again, any liquid soap or shower gel, and half a cup of soap. So there it goes. And mixing that all together. It's also half a cup of soap into the agar agar. So I'll use a different color so that we can differentiate. <laughs> so half a cup into the agar agar as well. Everything else is the same from here on out. It just looks different. So half a cup again in here. So this one is quite thick, so just be a little bit careful when you're mixing it all together. Gajal said his doesn't his didn't turn uh, thick. Okay, so if um, if the agar agar you used didn't turn thick, if it's still quite liquidy then um, give it another stir and put it in the microwave again for maybe another 20 seconds or so. Um, might depend on your microwave a little bit too. And I think some egg are air in like in bigger flakes. So it might need so to, might need to have a little more salt. Salt. But, but And also, um, it was the two tablespoons of that one. So just keep that in mind. But I'll show you what mine both look like now. So careful, um, the bowl is pretty hot, but I have strong hands. So this is what the agar agar one looks like. So really, really thick. And the gelatin is really liquidy. And they're different colors because I use different soaps in them. So um, perhaps we could put up another poll, um, just relaunching, asking if we're ready to move on to the next steps if you have some optional ingredients to add. Okay, how are those results looking, Katie? So it looks like there's there's a couple of people still needing a little bit more time. Okay. Um, while we're waiting, I could ask, um, 
I guess like a couple questions. So um, is anyone doing anything fun for the rest of the summer? Is anyone yeah. got anything planned before they uh, go back to school? What are you doing, Katie? Um, I'm going to I'm going climbing outside um, in a place called Skaha, but it's actually on fire right now. So oh, no. I don't know if it's going to be actually happening. So we'll see. So Chloe has some school on Tuesday, so they might go to Ingenation. Cool. Oh, I think I heard of that. I'm going camping this weekend, and I don't actually do a lot of camping. So wish me luck, everyone. <laughs> But I'm trying to be more outdoorsy. Um, okay, so it's been a little while, unless anyone else has some cool things that they've been doing. Um, sure. I realized that my um, my computer keeps unmuting me, so it gives me an echo. So oh. people are telling me that I'm echoing. But oh, okay. Yeah. Um, does okay. it sound okay now, I think everybody? It's okay, yeah. okay. So hopefully, you should have your mixture here, whichever one you're using. So again, I'm going to double it because I'm doing it between both. So. Um, this is where if you want to add a little bit of color, you can do so. So something that I have done that I really enjoy is I'll add one color to the mixture and then swirl another one on top when we pour it in. So let's see, for the gelatin, I think I'm going to make it um, maybe a nice green color. And if you have an essential oil, you can also add like a couple drops of those. So essential oils are pretty strong. So you don't need too many. But let's do that. Okay, so I have this nice green. And I think for the agar, I'm going to go with blue because my soap is already tinted a little bit blue. And you really only need a couple of drops. You don't want it to be like too... Um, too deep in color, because otherwise I don't know, you could get food coloring stains. <laughs> okay, so if you have any other ingredients you want to add, um, you could add them here, but what I prefer to do is to distribute them on top of each little soap, because then it's a bit more even. So I'm going to go grab my silicone molds and show you what those look like. Okay, so this is just um, a regular tray because these are all little individual um, silicone muffin liners, like I mentioned. And that's just because then you can pop the soaps out individually and they make these nice little palm sized soaps. But if you have a different container, different size, it'll work with anything. You can even like pour it in a bigger Tupperware and then cut pieces out. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty simple and pretty flexible, don't mind the pun, <laughs> um, but this is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to distribute my gelatin and my agar half and half. So let's start with the gelatin. So this one, because it's so liquidy, um, will be pourable. So if you don't have a spout on your container like I do, then you could use um, your tablespoon measure and just slowly spoon them out if you have little individual ones. But I'm going to try pouring it and hope that I don't spill. So this would make some more, but I'm going to just stick with four of these for now. And this one will just harden in a big soap thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the agar, because it's so thick, we're just going to spoon it in. And might need another spoon to kind of help you out. It was good enough to eat, Maddie. <laughs> oh, that's a really interesting comment, Katie, because <laughs> they might look like delicious little treats, but please don't eat them and don't <laughs> yeah. don't let anyone in your family. If you have, if you have younger siblings, yeah. maybe keep them away from the yes. delicious looking cupcake looking uh, 
exactly. the thing that you're making. That's a very good point. Um, these are also going to be setting up in the fridge. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so now if you want to try a little swirl, this is what you can do. Let's see here. Let's try some swirls of blue. So I'm going to grab my food coloring and put one drop in each of these gelatin ones. And then I just have a little butter knife. You can use anything and kind of start to slowly swirl. Ooh, these are already doing their thing. It looks cool. Yeah, it does look cool. Woo! I'm not touching it too much because I want it to kind of keep the swirl. And with the agar, I'm going to add some little tea leaves on top. Because why not? These are biodegradable, so it just looks kind of pretty. So what happens if we have some leftover gelatin? Is there something they can put it in? Uh, so if you have like leftover, if you weren't using a little package and you, uh, and you had leftovers, you mean? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe Chloe can, um, can uh, say what she means by that. If it's just the package, maybe you can make some more. You can make soap. More soap. <laughs> or if it's, uh, if it's gelatin mixture with the soap and everything, then, um, yeah, you can use something to put it in. Either, yeah, you can just put it in another container um, for sure. You could, I guess, like add it to Jello or something, um, or just save it. So what I'm going to do now that everything is in here is I'm going to put these in the fridge to set because they will need, um, kind of depends, but like about an hour usually to fully set. And then I'll show you what they look like. I'm going to grab them. Oh, I saw someone ask what flowers I used. This is just a loose leaf tea actually. So it's kind of a blend of little flowers, but I know like lavender is popular in soaps, um, rose petals, that sort of thing. So let me find a place in my fridge here. Okay, so very gently popping these in. And some that we've already made. So this is what, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is what the gelatin ones look like. So I made these just plain kind of light green and they're very, very squishy, just like jello. But when you lather them up, like even with my hand already, I'm kind of lathering it and it has a little soapy texture on it. So um, it's kind of fun, especially on a really hot day. These do have to stay in the fridge in a covered container, but you can pop one out, take it into the shower with you, and it's sort of like a little cooling jelly, or you can use it to wash your hands. And the agar ones are quite a bit thicker, as you can see, hopefully. I swirled some red in these, but they still lather really well, and they feel like super cool um, on the skin when you are washing your hands. So, just something a little bit more interesting than a plain old bar of soap. But yeah, this is the difference. So agar, gelatin, but they both have some this really funky texture. And again, just to repeat, um, they will last in the fridge for, um, I would say, a week um, at least, but just in a covered container. So I'm going to rinse my hands because now I have soap on them. Yeah, there's one thing. I was testing this recipe out. We can show our faces now, I guess. Oh, yeah. we, have, we can show another experiment, actually. But um, yeah, so I was, I was trying this at home, and I made, I made a couple to actually make it work. Um, basically, it's like a little experiment. Sometimes you might need, like if they don't set, like the ones that you just saw, um, you might need to add um, just a little bit more gelatin mm -hmm. um, or there's a couple ways I had to Google it. So if you look on, on Google, there's a lot of answers of like how to make it better um, and actually make it work. 
Um, the salt really helps too, because I think the yeah. first ones we did didn't have any salt yeah. in them. And that was another thing. So yeah, yeah um, if they didn't mix well, it could also be the soap that you're using if it's one that we didn't try before. But um, uh, since we have a few minutes left, there's one more kind of fun little experiment that we're just going to demonstrate. So um, it won't involve you having to do anything else, but just bear with us. We're gonna move some stuff aside and show you one last cool thing. Oh yeah, and uh, how long do we refrigerate for? So um, from what I remember, they will usually set up in like the same amount of time that Jello will set up. So I think about an hour, um, it might even take less time than that. But once it's completely set on top, then you should be able to pop them out of the molds and use them. Yeah. And sometimes it takes longer than others. Like when, yeah. I, when I made mine, it was without the salt, like you said, but right. um, it was about two or three hours. So I guess it all mm. depends on, on yeah your mixture and everything. That's true. You might just need to check back because um, it also could take longer if you used like bigger bigger molds or if you put it all in one big container, then that might take a little bit longer. So for this last cool experiment, just grabbing a couple of things here. And to, yeah, to ask a, uh, answer a couple of questions asking, um, is it the fridge or freezer? It's the fridge that we're using, but I'm sure the freezer would work as well. So yeah, the freezer does work. Um, it just will make it kind of like extra cold and icy, obviously. Yeah. And then, um, the other question is, uh, oh, do we do they melt? So yes, um, if you leave them out, um, they might melt and uh, yes. become like a little. Yes. <laughs> That's why it's good to maybe just take them out when you need them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't really, I, I wouldn't leave one kind of sitting in the shower because it'll just sort of get all sad and droopy, but you can pop them out when you need them. Okay. So, whoop, I'm getting bubbles everywhere. <laughs> so this is a fun experiment if you are um, still watching and um, want to just watch this fun little demonstration. Uh, this is a fun little video we saw that sort of demonstrates how soap works. So um, to showcase this, we have some water in this bowl. Oh, um, I guess maybe I'll just wait a second just to see if anyone has any final questions about the soaps because we don't want to move too quickly. So um, any final questions? Um, yeah, someone that just didn't hear um, if they melted or not, and, and they do if you leave them out. Yeah, so what's going to happen is um, when you use one, once they're ready, you'll you know use it just like regular soap, and they'll, you'll see the lather of the soap kind of coming out. Um, and then usually what we do is just like pop it back in the fridge, or if you're using it in the shower, then it'll probably all melt over you. But yeah, if they're not in the fridge, they will not hold their shape. Yeah, that was the only question I saw so far. Okay, cool. So um, this is just a little fun demonstration showing how soap interacts with germs. So this is water, and the water in this bowl, um, ignore the little design at the bottom, the water in this bowl represents the surface of the hand. And in here there is black pepper. I don't have a pepper grinder right now, so. The black pepper, now in the water, represents germs on your hand. So that's what it is supposed to represent. Now, if I put my finger in the water, um, maybe I have, you know what, I already have soap on my hands. Yeah. So <laughs> Katie, maybe you can do it because yeah. my hands are still covered in soap. All right, so if I was to put my finger in the water here, then, as you can see, I got all my germs all over me. So they're not actually germs, they're pepper. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna use my other finger, and this time I'm gonna put it into um, the soap. So I got my germy finger here, and I'm gonna lather up my soap here. And let's see what happens when I put my soap finger into the pepper. 
whoa <laughs> isn't that crazy i hope everyone saw but it just immediately repelled all yeah. the germs so if i was to mix it up again let's see what happens if it does it again it might not work because i have some, there's some soap in this now but we'll just have it here and let's see if it happens again i haven't tried it a second time but it kind of does the stuff that's on the top is uh repelling my finger because i have soap on it but if i was to put it in yeah the soap is kind of making it go down to the bottom um, but yeah, basically, if you want to try that at home, um, that's to demonstrate just how soap repels that water, that the um, germs on your finger. So wash your hands. Yeah, <laughs> that's it, everybody. And you can get pepper off your fingers too. Okay, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so um, sorry, just making sure you can see all of our heads here. All of our heads. <laughs> <laughs> all of our multiple heads. <laughs> Yeah. So right. um, we only have a couple of minutes left, but Katie and myself, uh, Maddie, we just really, really want to say thank you so much for joining us this summer for our live streams. We had the most fun time ever with mm -hmm. all of you, and we're going to miss you very much when we stop doing them. So yeah. this is our very last session, but anything you want to say, Katie? No, um, I think it's, yeah, it was refreshing to see you guys and have interactions with you because we really missed that the summer in-person camps aren't running. So, um, yeah, we're really happy that we could at least um, do something with you during the summer. Um, yeah. So, yeah, really appreciate you joining us um, and making our summer a little bit better as well. Um, but hopefully we'll see you in uh, maybe the year, like throughout the year, PD camps, if we are running in person or next uh, summer if we're running in person again. Mm -hmm. Hopefully things turn out and we are going to be uh, seeing you again. And um, yeah, well, well yeah. thank you so much. And um, like we said, there's going to be recording and we'll put it up onto our YouTube channel. Um, we'll share that playlist um, at the end in our survey and just give us some feedback um, on the survey too, just in case we do these again. Um, yeah. throughout the year yeah yeah the feedback is really helpful and um if in a couple of hours or an hour however long it takes for your jelly soaps to firm up if you would like to send us a photo um i'll go ahead and put it in the chat box our email address we'd love to see your photos and we put some of them on our facebook page so if you're okay with it being on the facebook page if you send us a photo please let us know mm -hmm. but um in just a second we'll go ahead and put that in the chat box so yeah. Um, we'll turn off our video and stick around if anyone has any questions um, or wants to chat for a couple of minutes. But um, if you're heading out, then thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. <laughs>